Now that we know the difference between discrete and continuous random variables, we're going to focus on discrete random variables for the rest of chapter 6. Now we want to be able to analyze them using a lot of different tools. And the first tool we're going to use is probability histograms. And if you're worried about it, don't worry about continuous ones. Um, we will work with continuous random variables in chapter 7, 8, and beyond. So they're coming back, don't worry. All right, so a probability histogram is a histogram where the horizontal axis corresponds to the value of the random variable, and the vertical axis represents the probability of each value of the random variable. So let's um, do an example. So example two, the NBA Finals is a best of seven series. The following table shows the number of games that have been played in every finals from 1950 to 2014. The following is a frequency distribution of the data. So when you look at this variable x right here, this is a random variable because if you're going to go choose one of these games, so randomly select one of the NBA final series out of a hat, you don't know ahead of time if it's going to be a four game series, five game series, six or seven. Those are the only options, but it's random, right? So if you're randomly choosing one. Now the count is how many there were. So for example, there's been a sweep, that's what that's called, when the team that wins gets the first four games in a row, the series is done. So they won the best of seven. So that would be eight times, that's only happened eight times. Five games has happened 16 times and so on. Now we wanna find the probability here. And the probability is gonna be eight divided by the total. So we need to find the total for the counts. How many NBA finals have there been? So we grab a calculator and we type 8 plus 16 plus and we get a total of 65. So there we have it. So we want 8 divided by 65 and it says to give three decimal places. So I'm going to do that. Let me grab the calculator to do it. 8 divided by 65. Get 0.123 when you round to three decimal places. And then we're just going to do it again and again for each of these other sets. So 16 out of 65, 23 out of 65, and so on. There, I just paused you and went and found a whole bunch of them. So let me find the 16 divided by 65, enter. 23 divided by 65, enter. So you can see how I did it. And then I'm rounding them to three decimal places. So that second one is going to get rounded to 0.246. All right, now if you did this correctly, then these four numbers should add up to 1. So let's see if they do. 0.123 plus 0.246 plus, oops, I got a zero point on that one. And sure enough, it makes 1. Now if it had made 0 0.999 or 1.001, .001, that would have been okay. I mean, that happens sometimes. So that's due to rounding error because you're rounding to three decimal places but any more than that, and that would be too much. And then what we do is we make a histogram of it. So we say the x-axis is four, five, six, seven. We have the bars touching, and then we have the probability as our y-axis variable. And then we have each of these probabilities as the heights of those bars. Now the area of the four bars, of course, must add up to one as, um, as does as do the probability or as does the probability column, right? That probability column has to add up to 1, and so does, or so do the histogram bars, right? Now the shape of this distribution is a little bit skewed left. Um, it's 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 not that slight, it's, it's skewed left because it has this tail and it's because if five, six and seven were the only options, you'd be okay, but it's the four down there off to the left. Now, why is this a discrete probability distribution? Oops. That's because the X variable, the random variable X, which is equal to the number of games in the finals, so the number of games in a or in an NBA in a yeah not in a National Basketball Association finals series 
is a discrete variable. Now why, you have to explain, um, because there are a countable number of games in the series. You cannot have, you know, 4.56732 games in a series, right? It's going to be a whole number. So you either have four games or you have five games or you have six games. That's discrete, right? That's what makes it discrete. It's because you can't have decimal games in a series. Now that we've seen what a probability histogram looks like, let's take a gander at discrete and continuous probability distribution graphs. Now the ones on the left hand side are for discrete variables, things you're going to see in chapter 6. And the ones on the right are more for continuous variables, things you're going to see in chapters um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can see they're coming. <laughs> All right, so discrete variables, you can see they all are segmented into histogram bars and bins. And that's because the x-axis only has a countable number of discrete variable values possible. So if you look at this bottom one, for example, either it's 1 or it's 2 or it's 3. That's it. Those are your only options. So it is discrete, and therefore you have the segmenting of the graph. I actually just added those words in because I liked it, segmented graph. So you're segmenting your graph up because only a distinct number of x values are possible. Um, technically, you can go on for infinite values. However, usually that's not the case. So um, most of these graphs have a distinct lowest and highest x value. So it ends here at 0 and it ends here at 5 and that's it. Or this one starts at 0 and ends at 15. This one starts at 4 and ends at 10 and that's it. That's all you're going to get. Um, actually, with this one, you might get a little bit more. You technically can go down to zero, but you can't go any higher than 10. So they have lowest and highest points, in other words. Now, continuous distributions are not that way. The continuous distributions all have curves instead of bars. Um, because hypothetically, x any x value is possible in a given range. So you could say, if you look at this one, for example, X could be anywhere from 1 to 2. It can't, over on the right, excuse me, over on the left, it could either be 1 or it's 2. That's it. But over here on the right, it could be 1.23642. Right? That's possible. And so you have this continuous curve drawn. All right. So the other thing that's going on is that all three of these graphs technically have the x-axis as an asymptote. So if you look here, I can't draw it when I draw these pictures, but you get the idea. This curve just keeps going and going and going, and it surfboards along, kind of skates along the x-axis, and it goes technically, hypothetically, forever. Of course, when we use it for applications, it doesn't make any sense to think of it as going forever, but we nevertheless, we will still refer to it that way. So your x variable can be anything, and it goes off to Never Never Land. If you remember this particular graph up here, the one we're looking at at the top, that's um, very much the graphs of the heights of men. So heights of men make this kind of graph shape where the middle is the mean. And if you remember, Yao Ming had a z-score of 7.17. He's the one of the tallest people to ever play in the NBA. He's 7 feet 6 inches tall, and his z-score was 7.17. And that exactly illustrates my point. He would be way off on the tail over here on the right. That's because this curve doesn't stop. It just keeps going and going and going forever. And that's what makes a continuous curve quite different from a discrete curve. Um, discrete curves, not all of them, but almost all of them, and all the ones we're going to work with, have a distinct beginning and a distinct end. And they only can take on specific values. Whereas the continuous distributions could technically be anything. For this particular one on the bottom, it could be anything from zero to forever, and this curve just keeps going and going and going. And also you could have any decimal point in there.